The History of Jack O'Neill Colonel Jonathan Jack O'Neill was commanding officer of SG-1, the flagship unit assigned to the Stargate Command Facility. An officer of the United States Air Force, O'Neill was pulled out of retirement and assigned to lead the first Stargate mission to Abydos. He was selected because of his state of depression and self-hatred following the accidental death of his young son, Charlie. O'Neill was born in Chicago, October 20th, 1952, according to his security ID, and raised in Minnesota. He has made many enemies in his years of service, and arguably fewer friends. Beyond the death of Charlie, very little is known about O'Neill's early years. He possesses a sharp, sarcastic sense of humor, and is not above taunting an enemy in the heart of battle, or while in captivity. If you count skull fractures, Jack has nine broken bones. He was parachuting between the borders of Iran and Iraq in the 1980s and hit the ground hard. There was no rescue. Instead, he spent nine days making it out on his own, back into Allied territory. Jack spent several years in a black op unit of the United States military and was imprisoned in Iraq for four months after a mission under the command of Frank Cromwell. With this in mind, it has been deduced that O'Neill married before 1988. He confirmed that he and his wife Sarah were together at the time of imprisonment since she was his primary motivation for escaping. Sometime after escaping the prison, Charlie O'Neill was conceived. Close relationships seemed to be difficult for Jack. Major Charles Kowalski was a friend of O'Neill despite the fact that he never knew Jack had a son. Kowalski claimed that he could beat Jack at any game of street hockey. They had served together on at least one black ops mission in East Germany in 1982. Their mission was to infiltrate a wooden compound and capture a Russian agent, codenamed Boris. But enemy soldiers were waiting, and O'Neill's friend and commanding officer, John Michaels, was killed. During his off hours, Jack spent time with his wife and son. Family brought terrific meaning to his life. Simple games of catch and baseball were his son's favorite, fulfilling the parts of his existence that were inaccessible through his military career. But one fateful autumn day, Charlie came home from school with his class pictures. The boy uncovered his father's handgun and fatally shot himself inside the home. Jack and Sarah heard the shot from outside and rushed Charlie to the hospital. The child did not survive. The impact of Charlie's death sent O'Neill into a deep depression. He was deactivated from duty until two of General West's officers arrived at his house, informing him that he had been brought back into active service at the Creek Mountain facility. The top secret Stargate program was approaching a critical juncture. O'Neill accepted the mission that if Dr. Daniel Jackson succeeded in opening this doorway to heaven, he would go through the other side and assess the situation, and if he found any hostile threats to Earth, would give his life to destroy the Stargate with a nuclear weapon. The Stargate was opened around 1996, forever changing O'Neill's life. On the other side of the portal was a supreme system lord, Ra, who had seeded the world of Abydos with humans. With the help of Jackson and the native Abydonians, O'Neill had instead used the bond to obliterate the false god in orbit aboard his mothership. O'Neill returned to Earth, leaving Jackson, per his request, on Abydos. Arriving home from the mission, O'Neill found Sarah wishing him gone from the home. Soon divorced, he was alone for the first time in over a decade. With the Stargate program shut down and transplanted to the Cheyenne Mountain, Jack retired from service. He quit smoking and spent most of his time in solitude. Some on his roof staring at the stars through a telescope. It was there on his roof one year later that he learned that the Stargate had been reopened and a new threat had emerged. 
With the inception of Stargate Command under Major General George Hammond, O'Neill agreed to come out of retirement to help the flagship field unit SG-1. Along with Samantha Carter, his new second-in-command, he returned to Abydos to retrieve Dr. Jackson and uncover the source of the new Gwald threat. But his good friend Shara, an Abydonian boy, was soon kidnapped by the Gwald system lord Apophis, giving O'Neill a very personal reason to seek out and find his new enemy. The SG-1 team and the worlds that they have explored had forced O'Neill to reassess his future and his relationships. His initial dislike for Jackson changed into a fondness over the course of many years. Frequently disagreeing with the scientists, he found common ground nonetheless, realizing both complementaries in each other's strengths, and both in diplomacy and in battle. When Jackson died and ascended to a higher plane of existence, O'Neill struggled with how to deal with grief, but eventually was reunited with his lost friend. Jack also became a good friend and brother of Tilk, a warrior as much as he, whom he had convinced to turn against the Gwald and join them. Hammond, despite being his commanding officer, also became a friend and confidant. Frequently putting up with Jack's jagged edge sarcastic attitude, he claims the storm of frustration which the man in any decision is forced to make. And beyond his friendship forged with Samantha Carter, Jack has confessed that he had come to care about her a lot more than their military relationship allows him to. Regulations prevent them from instigating a romantic relationship. Among his many achievements over the years, O'Neill has been implanted with a symbiote twice, one a Gwald and one a Tok'ra. He has had the Ancients Library downloaded into his brain twice. He kidnapped an alien child named Murin to allow her to experience life as a kid. He died and was revived countless times in Ball's sarcophagus. He has spent three months becoming part of an Eteran society, believing he was fated to live out his life there. He was framed for the murder of the U.S. Senator Robert Kinsey. He was rapidly aged by Gwald nanocytes. He was possessed by a microscopic alien race, trapped in a time loop, and saved the Earth more times than he can count. He has also directly contributed to the defeat of such powerful Gwalds as Ra, Apophis, Chorus, Seth, Hathor, Sokar, Nirdi, Heroer, and Marduk among others. Many of Jack's dearest friends have not necessarily been human. Thor, the supreme commander of the Asgard fleet, whom Jack knows as his buddy, has been a friend from the beginning. The Asgard saw potential of the human race in Jack and chose to ally themselves with Earth. Thor has even revealed to the Asgard that he had a fondness to the Colonel to be quite unique. Having spent seven years in the command of SG-1 team, O'Neill's life certainly has changed for the better. He was promoted to Brigadier General and replaced Hammond as the commander of the SGC. He was never quite comfortable with the desk job and left the position after one year. He was again promoted to Major General and now serves in the higher levels of the program. At the newly created Homeworld Command office in the Pentagon in Washington, D.C. Fortunately for Jack, his kind heart and courageous spirit only served to better relationships with his teammates, allies, and the rest of the species he encounters throughout the galaxy. Thank you for watching the history of Jack O'Neill. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe if you can. If you did, then thank you, and have a nice day. Bye-bye.